I. I read Geek Love. That was, whew, that was. Okay, I wanna talk about it. I'm gonna go spoiler free. If I decide to start putting spoilers in, I will let you know. Oh, I forgot my steering wheel. Bah. Okay, come here. Geek Love was not, it was not what I expected. I was expecting something very carnival-y because when I was looking for a carnival book, everybody said, Geek Love. They grabbed me by the face, they pulled me in, and they said, read Geek Love. It's not the year for touching faces. And so I did, but it really felt to me like more of a cult book. It was carnival-y. A little history about Geek Love. It is 31 years old, great age, and it is written by Catherine Dunn. She wrote other stuff, but Geek Love is her big old thing. This book is a cult classic, and I did not know. I had never heard of it before this year, but once I had heard of it, I couldn't stop hearing about it. The Bader Meinhof phenomenon, or the frequency illusion, but I like to sound smart. <laughs> oh, Shanna, yeah. She's like the smartest person that I've ever met. Let's start with the title, Geek Love. If you're like me, you think this is gonna be so sweet. It's gonna be computer game playing dorks just kissing. It was not that. A geek, turns out, is a sideshow in a carnival where they bite the heads off chickens. <gasps> and it's all bloody and horrible. I would not pay anybody money to see that. The premise of this book is a family, the Bukowskis. I call them the Bukowskis for I'm pretty sure this entire video. They are the Banuskis. Banuski. Now, in my defense, the book does have kind of a Charles Bukowski feel. It's kind of like, dark and weird and dirty feeling so oops forgive me <sighs> started out with old ma and pa bukowski they met in the carnival and little bukowski the mom filled in for a geek who broke his teeth and now she's the geek they fall in love. Daddy Bukowski had this idea that they could supply their own freaks for a freak show if they just made them. So they got busy making those, but not just the old classic way. They added chemicals and medicine and all sorts of horrible stuff in an attempt to make very deformed children. The cast of characters from there, the rest of the Bukowskis. We've got Artie Bukowski, the aqua boy. He is a head, torso, and flippers. We have the twins, Electra and Ephigenia. Ephigenia? And they are Siamese twins connected at the waist. And then we have our narrator, Ollie. She is a bald, humpbacked, albino dwarf. And then the last is Chick, their little normie, or he would be normal if he didn't have telekinesis. So yeah, that's them. I don't know if I liked this book, but I think it's going to stick with me. I finished it last night, you should know. So it's really been just rattling around in my brain since then. And I listened to it on audio, so I don't know if that makes a difference. The narrator was great though. I think I recognized her, I'm pretty sure that she's the same narrator who did Nosferatu? I'm gonna look that up and tell you if I'm right. She's like the smartest person that I've ever met. This book has this huge cult following and there were definite things I did not like about it, but I can see why it's so popular. It's a little bit crude for me and I mean crude in, I think like it's meant to be shocking, but these are words I cannot say without getting my video flagged and nobody getting to watch it. So, and
they're all talked about very, very crudely. Sorry, I'm sure I bleeped those all out, but I'll try and make it obvious. The weird thing is, you start out with these characters who are very happy with themselves and their bodies. Their lives are in a traveling carnival. They are the freaks and it's their family's carnival. They are told by their parents that they are perfect, that they are the success. And their parents love them for their abnormalities. Any normal kids that they have, they get rid of. So they don't look at themselves as wrong. A lot of things are happening in the book that are wrong and I know they're wrong, but also the characters are not likable. You can tell how much time the author put into this book. And I'm pretty sure it was like over 10 years that she was writing it. So like you can feel the love that she put into these characters. Sorry, I keep looking off in the distance because I don't, I'm still processing it. Well, I don't think that this is going to be, I don't even know that I liked this book, but it's one that will stick with me. And I think that time is going to help me with this one because I think over time I may reflect on it as better than I feel now. I just think it needs some time with me. Like I was saying, it felt like a cult book, not a carnival book. I was looking for some juggling and some fun house mirrors and like Artie, Arturo, Aqua Boy, he, he, he's not okay. You know what? Let's just, uh, one sec. I couldn't find my sunglasses. I'm gonna spoil some stuff for a little while, so if you do not want any spoilers for this story, skip to whatever it says here, and the spoilers will be done. I'll just give you a sec. Okay, so Arturo, the aqua boy, he is the oldest of the children, and he is a bad guy. He is not nice, he is a absolute psychopath, sociopath, and he raises up this entire religion around himself. <laughs> it's called Archuism, and it's definitely a cult. Everybody has to pay money to come in, and the lower ranked people have to help the higher ranked people. Why do the higher ranked people need help, you ask? because they are all trying to be like Artie. You will recall that Artie is a head, a torso, and fins. And by fins, I mean like stumps. The lower people start by getting like fingers removed, and then the higher people get their feet and hands removed, and they just slowly stump it up <sighs> until eventually they have achieved greatness and they have chopped off all of their limbs. It's weird. It's not a religion I would choose. Different strokes, am I right? And there was, speaking of like the weird crude stuff that I didn't like, the sisters and, well basically all the sisters, all really wanted Artie's love and seed. One of them got it. There was a lot of weird pregnancy stuff and there was non-consensual stuff. I mean, how about the whole, all of the babies that didn't work got saved in jars of formaldehyde. That was weird. It wasn't the weird crudeness. Like that was weird, but okay. It kind of fit the tone. When a guy came to Artie because he made him a big weird jerk off machine, if that was, why? Why? So there's a lot of stuff like that that made me say, I don't know why I'm listening to this. Okay, let's go back to the other people who are skipping, but I'm gonna make them think that they missed something so that they're like, oh, I have to go back and watch her video. So here we go. <laughs> Hoo -hoo. Yeah, it's a good one. Yeah, overall, the book, I can see why so many people love it. 
it's not really what I thought I was going to be reading, but it was okay. The ending kind of sucks. It's the kind of book that, especially now that I know it's a cult classic, I was going to read eventually anyways. I love to know about those books. It actually kind of reminded me in this might be weird, but of A Clockwork Orange. I had such a hard time getting through that book because if you've read it, the language is really, really rough. But also there is a level of crudeness to that book that unlike in this one, a lot of it felt kind of almost uncalled for, uh, whereas it fit in better in that book, but it had like that same weird tone to it. So if you like A Clockwork Orange, Maybe you'll like this one. I don't know. This is also kind of the way Clockwork Orange left me feeling. Where I got to the end of it and I was like, all right. The way that I felt at the end of this book reminds me of the way I felt at the end of that book. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. In the end, I am actually glad that I read it. I'm glad that I know what it is. And now when all of the cultural references pop up, I'll actually get it. But yeah, it's a weird one. It's not for everybody. Definitely. It's barely for me. It's been hard this year. Like, if you checked out my last video, you know that the year has been tough to read heavy books. This one wasn't exactly heavy. It was really, really strange. But I did find for some parts me just being like, could you be over yet? When I got past those kind of ruts, it was good. It was fine. It's all right. I'm going to give it three and a... Three and a half stars. Three and a half stars. That's it guys. I hope you like this. I feel kind of weird when I'm doing reviews, but you know, whatever. Uh, if you liked it, please give me a like, subscribe, comment on the video, ring the bell. Ooh, I added a new one there. But yeah, comments, likes, sharing, all of that helps me grow. So thank you. Thanks for watching guys. I will see you on Monday.